Welcome to part 5 of the rock sculpting tutorial. In the previous part we finished up the sculpting section of the tutorial. And in this part I will set up and render multiple render passes that I will later take into Photoshop where I will combine them into one final image. For this part I will be using Maya together with Arnold, which is included with newer versions of Maya. Coming from real-time 3D, I am very unexperienced with the rendering process. So to make things easier, I'm using a lighting and rendering template. The template comes with already made lighting setups, as well as materials that is made to fit the lighting setups. Perfect for people like me. They also have the same template file available for Blender, Modo and V-Ray. I will add the links to the free content file linked in the video description. But I will only be rendering some basic passes. So if you want to stay in ZBrush to render, that works as well. Even real-time rendering engines, such as Marmoset Toolbag, can produce most of the same passes. So let's start importing the files. To make the files work with the template, I need to move all the files to the character group. Now I need to decide on a composition or a camera angle for my render. I'm not going to do anything too creative, I might just go for a straight middle composition. But I'll give it a slight angle for more interesting lighting and depth. Now that I have decided on a composition, I will try out some of the lighting templates. Usually I turn down the resolution a bit while I switch between the different templates, but nothing extreme. Nowadays rendering is really fast and you also get to see the results right away. A big reason why I went into games and real-time 3D was because of long render times. Now with all the RTX boosted GPU rendering options and having access to the right hardware eliminates a lot of those hurdles. There is quite a variation of templates, but I'm looking for something neutral with backlighting, so I picked template number 4. By selecting the lights group, you can also move or rotate the lighting to further customize it to your taste. Now that I have it all set up, I'm gonna start with the main beauty render pass. Once the render is finished, I will also save the ID map that you get by choosing ID in the top left corner drop down list. It automatically gives each separate mesh its own ID color, which will be very useful later on in Photoshop when I need to isolate the ground from the rocks. When saving the render passes, you have to type in the file format manually. If you don't, it will automatically be saved as JPEG. EXR is the native format and will give you the closest result to what you are seeing in the Maya viewport. In the same drop down menu, you can also find the Seta depth pass. This pass visualizes the depth of a render, so surfaces close to the camera are black and the further away the whiter it gets. Perfect pass for, to use for depth of field or fog. If you are using Maya like me, the setup pass might show as 100% white at first. To fix this you can go to the display tab on the right and lower the exposure. The slider doesn't go so far, but if you type in the number you can force it. If you can't see the setup pass option in the drop down menu, you might need to enable it. To do that, you can go to Render Settings, and then the AOV tab. Here you can move it to Active with the arrow button. It's currently active for me, so I'm demonstrating with another pass. And after you have done that, it should show up in the Render drop-down menu. The next render pass I need to do is uh, ambient occlusion pass. 
For this I'll need to assign a new material. I don't think this material is available from the start, so you will need to create one. The only thing you have to do is create a new standard surface shader, then open up the material graph network and add an ambient occlusion node to it. I have already added mine, but you can find the node by searching for ambient occlusion. I'll leave the settings as they are and assign the material to the meshes. Once I have rendered and saved the AO pass, I will start on the curvature pass. Not sure if I will use this one or not, but it can be great for masking out edges and highlighting them in certain areas. I have a pre-made curvature material, but as with the ambient occlusion material, I don't think it's available from the start. But for this one, we only really need the curvature node and not the whole material. If you search and add the curvature node to a graph and select it, then you can go to the render window and press the isolate selected button. Now it will only render the information from that single node. And since I only want the black and white curvature information to use as a mask, that is enough. I'm gonna play with the exposure a bit then export and call it done. So that is all for the rendering process. In the next part I will start post-processing in Photoshop. Hope to see you there.